Chapter 2 of Peter Roach's book, English Phonetics and Phonology, introduces readers to the fundamental concepts of phonetics and phonology. The chapter begins with an overview of the International Phonetic Alphabet, IPA, a system of symbols used to represent the sounds of human language. Roach then delves into the topic of articulatory phonetics, which is concerned with the physical production of speech sounds in the vocal tract. The chapter also covers acoustic phonetics, which is the study of the physical properties of sound waves and their relationship to the perception of speech sounds. In addition, Roach introduces readers to the concept of phonology, which is concerned with the systematic organization of speech sounds within a language. Throughout the chapter, Roach provides numerous examples and exercises to help readers develop their understanding of the material. The chapter concludes with a discussion of the importance of phonetics and phonology in language teaching and learning, emphasizing the practical applications of these fields for language learners and teachers. These are the items we are going to talk about in this chapter. For the production of speech sounds, you need articulators. Articulators need muscles. The muscles of the chest, the larynx, and the vocal tract. The muscles of the chest control the airflow. The larynx modifies the airflow to produce the different sounds. The air escapes through the vocal tract which escapes the oral cavity or the nasal cavity. The diaphragm pushes the lungs up, expelling the air through the windpipe, through the larynx and the vocal tract. Here is a picture of the lungs and the diaphragm close to real. Here is a cross-section of the human head. The air passes from the lungs through the trachea and goes out through the vocal or nasal cavity. There is a set of seven main articulators. The study of these articulators is called articulatory phonetics. These are the organs or the parts responsible for producing sounds. The pharynx. A tube just above the larynx. The soft palate or velum. It controls the oral nasal cavities. The sounds produced at the soft palate are called velars. The hard palate. The roof of the mouth. This sound is called palatal. The alveolar ridge. Just behind the upper teeth. It has a slightly rougher surface than the hard palate. These sounds are called alveolars. The tongue. The most important articulator. It is divided into four main parts. The tip, the blade, the back and the root. There is no definite dividing line between these parts. Just an approximation. The teeth. These sounds are made with the tongue touching the upper teeth. These are called dentals. These sounds can also be produced by inserting the tip of the tongue between the upper and lower teeth. In this case, the sounds can be labeled as interdentals. The lips are essential parts. The bilabials P and B are produced by pressing the two lips together. And the labiodental V and F are produced by touching the upper teeth with the lower lip. This is where the pharynx is. Then the soft palate. The hard palate the alveolar ridge, the tongue, the teeth and lips. There are other contributing articulators. They included the larynx, the jaws, and the nasal cavity. Vowels are produced with no obstruction of the airflow. The air passes from the larynx to the lips with almost no obstruction of the airflow. The term vocoids are used by some scholars to refer to vowels and contoids to refer to consonants. These sounds are consonant but have the vowel feature. No obstruction. But still they are consonant sounds. The distribution of sounds can also pose a problem. We can see that the sound la can be followed by a vowel having no obstruction but cannot be followed by wa which also has no obstruction of airflow. The wa sound does not occur in the same environment as a vowel. A similar case applies to the ha sound. It can be followed by a vowel but cannot act as vowel before the ka and ma sounds. Vowels can be classified according to the vertical distance between the tongue and the roof of the mouth, and the part of the tongue involved in the production process. So they can be either close or open depending on the vertical distance, front or back depending on the part of the tongue involved. 
The tongue and the jaws play an important role in these processes. The lips can also take part in the pronunciation of vowels, which can be rounded as in the vowel sound in boot, spread as in the vowel sound feet, or neutral as in the vowel sound in get. Cardinal vowels are vowels that do not belong to any particular language. They are used as a standard reference system. The sounds that appear on this quadrilateral are called primary cardinal vowels. These are the main 12 English short and long vowels. However, these vowels can combine to form diphthongs and triphthongs to make the total number of vowels in British English 20. This vowel is more open than cardinal one, nearer to the center, the lips are slightly spread. This vowel is between the two cardinals two and three, the lips are slightly spread. This vowel is not as open as cardinal four, the lips are slightly spread. This vowel is central. More open than cardinal three, the lips are neutral. This vowel is not fully back. Between cardinal five and six, the lips are rounded. This vowel is more open than cardinal eight. Nearer to the center. The lips are rounded. This vowel in the word, cat, is pronounced with an open mouth and a slightly lowered jaw. It is a low front vowel, meaning that it is produced with the tongue in the front of the mouth and low in the mouth. This vowel in the word, bed, is pronounced with a relatively open mouth and a lowered jaw. It is a mid front vowel, meaning that it is produced with the tongue in the front of the mouth and in a mid position. This vowel in the word, cut, is pronounced with a relatively open mouth and a neutral tongue position. It is a mid-central vowel, meaning that it is produced with the tongue in the center of the mouth. On the diagram provided, various articulators are indicated by labeled arrows A to E. Write the names for the articulators. Stop the video for two minutes to do the exercise, then check your answer. Using the descriptive labels introduced for vowel classification, say what the following cardinal vowels are. Draw a vowel quadrilateral and indicate on it the correct places for the following English vowels. Stop the video for two minutes to do the exercise, then check your answer. Write the symbols for the vowels in the following words. Bread. Rough. Foot. Him. Pull. Cough. Mat. Friend. Stop the video for 4 minutes to do the exercise, then check your answer. Long vowels, diphthongs, and triphthongs. Go there, when in the mood. If you have an interest in phonetics and phonology, consider subscribing to my channel and turning on the notification bell to stay updated on our latest content.